The mass murder of students in Parkland, Florida last month causes many of us to wonder who's keeping our children safe. With guns showing up more than ever in our country's schools, we rely more than ever on school police officers as the first line of defense. Well, the Fox 5 I team's Randy Travis is here now with his investigation that raises concerns about the quality of some of the officers in one local district in particular. That's right, Russ and Sinead. Yeah, after a school police officer failed to engage the shooter in Parkland, Florida last month, we decided to investigate the backgrounds of Metro Atlanta school cops. Most departments scored well, according to records, at the Peace Officer Standards and Training Council or POST. One school district did not. I pulled your post profile. What's someone with a work history like yours doing, supposedly protecting kids? You need the best of the best on the streets and in the schools. You need the best to prevent the worst. Seven campus shootings already in 2018. Bullets going into your best friends. Including the mass murder in Parkland, Florida. I just saw blood everywhere. A school police officer there angered parents by staying outside rather than rushing in to confront the Parkland gunman. A hesitation that may have led to more student deaths. As our political leaders debate how best to prevent future shootings, it's clear school cops remain the first line of defense. So the Fox for the I team investigated the backgrounds of every school police officer in the largest metro districts. How many have been fired from a previous job or resigned before they could be fired or the subject of a post investigation? Those with troubled work histories made up 12% of the force in Atlanta public schools, 11% in DeKalb. Fulton and Cobb had single digits. Gwinnett schools did not employ a single school officer with a questionable work background. But Clayton County scored the worst in our evaluation. 16 of the 50 police officers here have questionable backgrounds. That's nearly one third of the entire school police force. Perhaps the most puzzling name on the list, Sergeant Freddie Davis. Sergeant, he's been promoted. He was DeKalb County police officer Freddie Davis in 2012 when he admitted having sex with a woman in his patrol car behind a shopping center. Davis was allowed to resign in lieu of termination and wound up on two years probation with post. In 2016, Douglasville police suspended him for two days without pay after several young women filed complaints he was flirting with them while on duty. It happened at this Chick-fil-A on Thornton Road. Derek and Valerie Wainwright told investigators Davis even followed their 16-year-old daughter's car as she left work late one night. He pulls up beside her at the red light. I was like, hey, where are you going, pretty lady? And she's like, I'm going home. And he was like, no, no, home is that way. According to this internal affairs report, Davis admitted making a statement about another fast food worker's lips and said he would like to kiss her. He resigned from Douglasville. According to Post Records, the very next day, Clayton County School Police hired Davis and later made him a sergeant. Now he's in the school system where there's more kids. As a parent, that's a nightmare. But Clayton School Police also recently added other troubled cops. Put your hands on your head. Like Ernest Mitchell, the man in the blue t-shirt. Post put him on three years probation and ordered anger management after a road rage incident in 2013 while he was off duty. The man who called 911 was a Navy corpsman headed back to North Carolina. He got right in front of me and locked up on his brakes really hard. I had a skid and I'm on the interstate, you know, I got people behind me, so I can't really do that. The caller told 911 dispatch he thought Mitchell waved a gun at him and taunted other drivers too. Where's your ID for being a cop? Troopers found Mitchell's gun under the front passenger seat and charged him with aggressive driving and simple assault. The solicitor ultimately dropped the charges because they couldn't determine in which county the crime was committed and the Navy wouldn't let the corpsman come back to testify. Mitchell would ultimately be fired from Clark Atlanta University. In previous years, he had resigned from two other police departments before he could be fired there. Yet last September, Clayton County School Police still hired Mitchell as a sergeant. For the Mitchell, Randy Travis with Fox 5 News. Mitchell quickly made an about face and headed for the office door, along with Joshua Goss, another Clayton School cop with a checkered work history. Goss quit instead of being fired by MARTA in 2015, accused of pretending to be three different people, all of them women, including a Gwinnett police officer. He denied it, but Post is recommending Goss's certification be revoked. Back to the sergeant. Working on a story about the caliber of school police officers, Sergeant Mitchell, and I pulled your Post profile. What's someone with a work history like yours doing, supposedly protecting kids? 
How'd you get this job in the first place, Sergeant Mitchell? Just answer the question, Sergeant. Do they know about your work history before they hired you, sir? Sergeant Mitchell wouldn't answer our questions. Neither would Clayton County School Superintendent Dr. Morcise Beasley. As for Sergeant Davis, the cop who so upset these parents, records show he was fired from Clayton County the same day we began questioning the background of its school police force. Well, through a super, uh, spokesperson, the superintendent said it's his policy not to comment on personnel matters. Regardless, we'd still like to know why his district decided at the beginning of this school year to hire a cop with known issues toward women and another cop with known issues involving anger and put each in key positions with the even greater importance today, protecting children. I mean, we're both watching this thing. I can't even believe what mm -hmm. we're looking at. And it raises the question, did the superintendent, did whoever hired these people, know about their backgrounds, do we know? Right, we don't know. And hopefully we'll find this out soon when we get some records that we've requested from the Clayton County School District. Yeah, did they know and they hired them anyway? Right. Or did they not bother to check and hired them anyway? You know, both of those questions are, are serious and, and, and of some concern. Um, and if they say yes to either of those, it's bad. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we would hope that they'll provide some answers. I'll let you know. Thanks so much, Randy. Okay. Thanks, Randy.